Today we're letting two scientists open up the head of a minke whale. It's been in formaldehyde for almost 100 years and it's quite a rare specimen. We're going to take a look for an earplug, a plug of waxy material that forms in the ear canal. They contain lots of really useful information about the animal's life. It's laid down year by year so we can use them in the same way that you'd section through a, a tree and count tree rings. Ear plugs are going to sit right about here. We're going to have to cut some tissue, but this is very preserved. It's going to be tough to get through those. Remove some of this external tissues and, and see where we're at. We have an opportunity here to not just take samples from um, earplugs, but also to look at muscle tissue and baleen. The importance of these tissues is that they actually have information about the animal's life history. With advances in analytical techniques, we can now, now get so much more information out of them. OK, that's good. So these are the baleen plates on a minke whale. And what we're trying to do is get the mouth open enough to get up underneath the gum line so we can get a full sample of the baleen. There? Yep. That's coming. There it is. There we go. Minke whales, like other species, have been affected by the generation of um, anthropogenic noise and um, pollutants. All of these things in combination cause stresses and they cause contaminants and other types of chemicals to be laid down in the tissues of the animal's body and it's those tissues that we're interested in examining. This specimen that we have from 1926 existed at a point in time before these large scale stresses actually existed in the wild. <laughs> Earplugs are really difficult to extract because they sit within the ear canal and there's no external opening. To get to them, you have to work around the back of the skull, find the tympanic bulla, actually remove the tympanic bulla that sits at the end of the ear canal and contains the other smaller bones. Once you've removed that, you find the glove finger process and hopefully you find an earplug. Some of the bones really easy to cut through, and the muscle isn't. Let's we'll see if we can find a plug. This is how the glove finger laid in the canal, and the wax should have protruded and been excreted from it to fill this, this chamber here, but we have the finger and the chamber, but I don't see a lot of evidence of a plug. Not necessarily surprising, based on the age, uh, of the individual, and so not all individuals have plugs, but at least we can have uh, comfort knowing that we've got the other tissues, the muscle and the baleen we can take back to lab and uh, do chemical analysis on those. Museum collections every few years go through a kind of a renaissance as these techniques develop and we can extract more really useful information from them. It's great to think that our collection, which is well over 100 years old, is contributing to science still in the 21st century.